On the first question, we're really taking it back to the basics. The question is saying, refer to the information in the diagram above and give a reason why forces P, Q and R are classified as vectors. Uh, so we can clearly see P here. Uh, we can see, clearly see Q and we can clearly see R, right? Uh, we have magnitudes, 500 newtons, 200 newtons and 300 newtons uh, respectively. And then we're given angles there, right? And then we know fully well that from the basics, if you have a magnitude and a direction, then that quantity is a vector, right? If you only have a magnitude, then it will be a scalar. But then because we have magnitudes and directions, then all forces P, Q and R are classified as vectors. Now let's do the interesting one, 2.2 for um, 8 marks. It's saying that uh, let's determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant force, either by calculation or by accurate construction and measurement. Use a scale of 10 millimeters is equal to 15 newtons if you are going to use measurements. But then let's not do any of that and then uh, just uh, find our answer by calculation, right? So if we uh, zoom in our sketch here, I just want to show you something, right? So let's pay attention to uh, our vector P, right? Our force P. So the force P is going to have a vertical component, right? So let's just put a vertical component there. And then it's also going to have a horizontal component, right? Uh, the same thing is true uh, with Q. We're going to have a horizontal component uh, for Q. And then uh, we're going to have a vertical component too. And for R, let's use a different color. We're going to have uh, a vertical component. Uh, there we go, pointing down. And then a horizontal component uh, going uh, to the left. If we take up as positive, then you will realize that uh, the Y component of R should have a negative sign. And if we take direction to the right is positive, the horizontal component of R should have a negative sign when we do our calculations, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So if you want to find uh, the resultant vector, right? So you're going to say FR squared is equals to the resultant along the X squared plus the resultant along the Y squared. So now it's up to us to find the resultant along the X and then uh, find the resultant along the Y so that we can be able to find uh, the resultant overall, right? So let's go ahead and find the resultant along the X, right? So this is how we're going to do it. Uh, let's start with uh, P. We're going to find the X component of P right and then plus the x component of q and then minus the x component of r because the vector is pointing in the opposite direction to the direction we're taking as positive that is so the x uh, component of p we're gonna have p right uh, the magnitude of that vector multiplied by cos of theta before we go anywhere, I want us to talk about the angle we're using when we say P multiplied by cos of theta. We're not going to use this 10 degrees angle that is there, right? Uh, instead of using that uh, 10 degrees angle, we're going to use uh, 80 degrees because we know that 90 minus 10 is 80 degrees, right? We always use the angle relative to the horizontal. Obviously, you can still use uh, that angle, that 10 degrees angle, but you would need to do a few adjustments. Instead, we're just going to use 80 degrees. So let's just keep that in mind. And then plus uh, the X component of our vector Q. So we're going to have Q uh, cos of theta. We know that for Q, theta is 30 degrees. And then minus now the X component of R. So we're going to have R uh, cos of theta, right? And then our angle there relative to the horizontal is 60 degrees. So we don't have a problem whatsoever. So if we go ahead and substitute that, we're going to get 500 uh, cos of 80 degrees, right? Plus uh, 200 cos of 30 degrees and then minus 300 cos of uh, 60 degrees. So now it's just a matter of putting all that in your calculator and you should get 110.03 newtons, right? 
uh, 110.03 newtons. So now we can move our attention to the y uh, components, right? The resultant along the y. So Fy is going to be, so for x, we used cos, cos, and cos, right? And then for y, we just do the same thing, but then we're using sine. So we're going to have P sine of theta, right? Plus Q sine of theta. We can see on our sketch that uh, the Y component of R is pointing down. So again, we're going to put a minus sign. So we have minus R uh, sine of theta, right? And then we know uh, what P is, that is 500. And then uh, sine of 80 degrees plus uh, 200 sine of 30 degrees and then minus 300 uh, sine of 60 degrees now you just put that in your calculator and you should get 332.6 newtons right no not so now we have fx we have fy we can go ahead and find fr squared right so fr squared being our resultant will be equals to so we have 110.03 squared plus uh 332.6 squared we take square roots on both sides so we're gonna have fr uh being equal to so here uh you can just take this to the power a half is the same thing as taking a square root right and then uh, we can do the same thing here right so if you compute that you should get fr is equal to 350 point three three newtons right so if we sketch that then our resultant vector should be uh somewhere here so we have a three hundred and fifty point three three newtons right and some angle here and then we know fully well that a force is a vector we need a magnitude and an angle we only have a magnitude up to so far so we have to go ahead and calculate the angle right uh, we know uh, the adjacent here is uh, the x right which is uh, 110.03 and then uh, the opposite is the y which is uh, 332.6 so you can choose so you can use uh, so you can use sine cos and tan you're gonna get your angle right uh, so let's just go ahead and use tan and see what happens. So we're going to say um, tan of theta is equal to uh, the opposite divided by the adjacent. So theta will be equal to tan inverse of the opposite is y, right? So we have 332.6 uh, divided by 110.03. If you put that in your calculator, it should get an angle of 71.69 degrees.